This leads us into the idea of significant figures. When you write down a measurement or the answer to a calculation, how many numbers do you use? The thing to keep in mind is that all measurements are inaccurate to a certain degree. This inaccuracy depends on the measuring device itself, as well as the human, or non-human, doing the measuring. So when we record a measurement, the way in which we write the number indicates the precision that we used and the degree of uncertainty that we have. So rule number one, all non-zero numbers are significant. So the number 123 has three non-zero numbers. This means that they are all significant, so the number of significant figures is three. The number 45.6789 has six non-zero numbers, which are again, all significant. So it has six significant figures. Okay, so let's talk zeros. This is where it gets tricky. Zeros located between non-zero digits are significant. So in the number 12.003, these two zeros are in between two non-zero digits. And so they're significant. The one, two, and three are non-zero digits, and so they are significant as well. So in this number, we have five significant figures. So what about 4,506,070? Well, the zero between the five and the six, and the zero between the six and the seven, are between two non-zero numbers. So those are both significant. The zero at the end is not between two non-zero numbers, so it is considered a placeholder and is not significant. The other two non-zero numbers are of course significant, so that gives us a total of six significant figures in this number. Rule number three. Zeros at the end of a number, or trailing zeros, are significant only if the number contains a decimal point. Now this last one is a little sneaky. Notice that we have a long number that ends with two zeros. So in this number, we have four non-zero numbers, those are all significant. And since those last two zeros fall to the right of a decimal place, they are significant. So we have two zeros that are significant, and then we have four non-zero numbers, so we have a total of six significant figures. Now what about this one? We have three trailing zeros, but there is no decimal point. So the only thing that is significant in this number are the three non-zero numbers. So 567,000 is going to have three significant figures. Now, what about this one? We have two zeros. One is in between two non-zero numbers, so that is definitely significant. And then we have a trailing zero, but we do have a decimal point, so that one is significant as well. And then take in our other four non-zero numbers, and we have six significant figures. Now, this last one is a little sneaky. Notice we have a long number that ends with two zeros. At the end is a decimal point. The decimal point would be there to indicate that we measured or rounded to that precision. This comes in a lot with our calculations that we'll see here in a minute. But that indicates that those two trailing zeros are going to be significant. So the zero in between the five and the six is significant. And then those two trailing zeros are also significant because there's a decimal place. And then we have four non-zero numbers, so we have a total of seven significant figures. The last rule has to do with zeros in a number smaller than one. The zeros to the left of the first non-zero number are significant. These are similar to the trailing zeros with no decimal in that they are only there to hold the place. So any zero to the right of the non-zero numbers are significant. So this zero in the decimal point one, two, three is going to be not significant because all that's doing is holding in place. So this number here, the only things that are significant are the three non-zero numbers. So we have three significant figures. Whew, now look at this one. We have two zeros to the left of the four, right after the decimal. But those, again, those are only holding the place. The only zero that is significant in this number is the one at the end, because it's a trailing zero in a number that has a decimal. So the first three zeros are not significant because they are to the left of the first non-zero digit. So the four, five, and six are obviously significant, so we have four significant figures. Now all of these zeros are to the left of the first non-zero number. So none of those zeros are significant. So the only digit in this number 
that is significant is going to be the 7. Now you are probably aware that when you punch numbers into a calculator, it will spit out a number with a lot of digits. When we record a calculation, we want it to reflect the precision with which we have measured our data. In other words, we don't want our answers to be more precise than our measurements. So we want to round our answer to a place where it reflects that precision. When we add or subtract measurements, the calculated answer will be rounded to the same number of digits to the right of the decimal point as that of the least precise quantity. This just means whichever the original number has the least number of decimal places, that's what we're going to round. So take 1,235 and subtract 467.8. Your calculator will give you an answer of 767.2. Since the 1,235 in our original problem has the least number of decimal places at none, we want to round so that our answer has no decimal places as well. So we round our answer of 767.2 to 767. In the second problem, we are subtracting 0 0.45 from 9.0123. The calculator will tell us that the answer is 8.5623. Looking at our original numbers, we can see the lowest number of decimal places is 2. So we want to round our answer to two decimal places as well. So we will round to 8.5623 to 8.56. For multiplication and division, it's a little bit different. The number of significant figures in our calculated answer will be the same as that of the lowest number of significant figures in our original numbers. Take 12,340 times 4.5. The calculated answer is 55,530. 12,340 has four significant figures and 4.5 has two. So we want to round our answer to two significant figures. 55,530 rounded to two significant figures will be 56,000. In the second problem, the first number has five significant figures, and the second number has four. When we calculate it out, we get a whole bunch of numbers, but we want to round our answer to four significant figures. So instead of 8,377.626, we are going to round to 8,378. So in the last one, the first number has five significant figures, and the second number has three. So when we get this really long decimal, we're going to want to round it to three significant figures. So that number rounded to three significant figures is going to be 0 0.699.